Hi, welcome to today's video. My name's Paul. So today, um, there's no painting as such, but just going to talk about a couple of my paintings and about this thing, composition. Or at least how I think about composition. I'm not putting this forward as, you know, the way you have to do a composition. It's just, this is how I approach it. And it may be of interest to some people. So this first painting, uh, this is one I did a few weeks ago, maybe. The way I think of composition is I think of it in terms of areas or shapes. So I'll show you what I mean. In this painting, we have a foreground. That's our first shape. And it's a rectangular shape. It sort of reflects the overall shape of the painting, this sort of rectangular landscape format. And you can further divide the painting into more of these rectangles. We have the sky. There's then a horizon line, which is this thin rectangle across the sort of middle of the, the painting. And the job or the role of that horizon line is just to separate the sky from the land. And I usually do that by a bluish, dark bluish line, which I think of as a hedgerow or some distant trees or something. I should say that pretty much all of my paintings, my landscape paintings are done from a mixture of imagination and memory rather than going out and uh, painting an actual landscape. So things aren't always representational in my uh, paintings. Hedgerows, for example, are not actually blue, of course, but it's all part of the way I paint them. And then there's one more rectangle in this one. There's not an awful lot happening in this in terms of details and things. This is the middle ground going into the distance. It's necessary. It plays an important role. It connects the horizon line and the foreground, but there isn't actually an awful lot happening in that middle ground in terms of details. Whereas in the foreground, of course, you have, that's where you have all the details. And that's just linear perspective. Um, things that are closer to us, we can see the details. Things that are further away, we can't see the details. And that's all linear perspective really is in landscape. At least that's how I think of it. Yes, you can start going into things like converging lines and vanishing points and stuff, but I think with all of this, you can make it as complicated as you want, but you can also keep it as simple as you want. And to me, linear perspective is just things that are close, we can see details, things that are further away, we can't see details. So by doing that and thinking in that way, you can create a sense of depth in your, in your paintings. Another useful idea with the composition, the paintings, is the idea of values. People know, people will often ask what I'm using. Um, and while colors, yes, of course, they create that overall look and feeling of the painting. They, especially in the sort of painting I'm doing, as I said, hedgerows are not blue. I paint them blue, but they're not actually blue. Um, I don't try to get realistic colors. I use just colors that I enjoy, but I do think about values. And so what are values? Well, I think the easiest way to think about it, if we get rid of all of these rectangles and we change it to a black and white image, these are values. So if you imagine everything has just been changed from color to a gray skill going from really dark, pretty much blacks up to whites. And you can see in that foreground, there's an awful lot happening in terms of values. And that's what I use to give sense of um, implied detail. When you look at it, it's actually very abstract. It's just a bunch of abstract marks um, using different values, letting some of the white of the paper come through using dry brush marks to get these lines. When people look at it, 
especially when it's in color, they'll start to read it as um, maybe there's a field of some sort of crop and these are the stalks growing up or this is the grass growing up. People will usually read it in that sort of way because that's what that's their experience of looking at a landscape, especially when it's a field like this. So again, from a compositional point of view, I'm using those values to create that sense of depth it, because it creates these sort of implied details in the foreground and the lack of details in the middle and distance. That's what gives that sense of depth. Or at least, as I say, that's the way I think of doing these landscapes. The other thing I can point out is that as we saw, these are all very horizontal areas. Sometimes with painting, it's good to add in um, a bit of, if you, everything is the same, it creates a very harmonious feeling. I don't want to get too much into all this harmony stuff and things. Um, if anybody's interested, I did create an online course. There's a link in the description below. Um, that's just a, a plug for my own stuff. Um, you can also find the same sort of information if you dig around on the internet long enough. But it does, as I say, create this sort of harmonious feeling because everything is very linear. The problem, the good thing about the harmony is that as human beings, we often find it attractive. We like harmony. But if everything is very harmonious, it can be a little bit boring. So it's good to add in some other things, some verticals, for example. We can do this with these grasses, these uh, dry brush marks. So here, this one, this one, these are all, they're sort of vertical or diagonal. And it just adds a bit of interest rather than everything just being like the red horizontal rectangles. Also in the sky, there's areas where I've added in blue. I should say again, with the skies, I see things a bit differently, I guess. I kind of see it in, if you imagine the old fashioned photographs, the negatives, you take some photographs, you take them to a pharmacy or something to get them developed. And they give you the photographs, plus they give you back the negatives. And in the negative, everything was reversed. So to me, the white spaces that I leave, just the white paper, that's the blue sky and the blue that I put on, those are the clouds, which I know is a bit crazy, but it's just the way I, I paint things. But anyway, these clouds that I've added in, they give a bit of vertical um, dimension as well. And the same over here. So basically to sum up all the horizontal things, it's creating a feeling of harmony, which creates a feeling of sort of a peaceful landscape, which is the overall feeling that I want to give with the painting. Somebody looking at it, the viewer can think that it's peaceful, it's relaxing. But just to add in a bit of interest, I added in these um, little vertical elements as well. Okay, so that's the first painting. I hope that makes some sort of sense to somebody. Um, but anyway, this is how I sort of look at composition. Another example, another painting. So there's a lot of similarities, but there are also some differences. And probably the main difference is this sort of triangular shape, this hedgerow that divides the landscape into two parts. Again, it also adds in a sort of um, linear perspective. As things get further away, they sort of shrink in size. It's like the uh, when they introduce the idea of linear perspective, one of the examples is very often, imagine standing on a, a bridge over a railway track. And as the railway track 
and gets further and further away, it appears to converge towards a point, a vanishing point. In reality, of course, we know that the tracks, the real tracks, are the same distance apart across the entire thing. Otherwise, well, the train wouldn't be able to ride along the tracks. So it's the same sort of idea here. The hedgerow gets smaller as it recedes into the distance. So adding in something like this, this sort of element, it has two effects then. It divides up the land, the middle ground and the foreground, and it also adds the feeling of depth again, but this time using linear perspective. The middle ground, again, you can see these areas, there's not a lot happening in there. Um, there's not much detail. And again, if we go over to um, black and white, you can see in the foreground, there's lots of lines and shapes and things suggesting detail, um, implied detail rather than actually painting in detail. And again, with the horizon line, we have a bit of darker values here just to separate the sky and the land. So like I say, there are similarities with the previous painting using the implied detail in the foreground and the lack of detail in the middle and distance to create that feeling of depth. I've also added in the hedgerow, which creates that linear perspective again, a feeling of depth in the painting. The horizon line in the darker value to separate the sky and the land. But adding in this triangular feature also, it adds in a bit more complexity maybe or difference in the the overall composition of the painting. It creates these different shapes. It's no longer just linear flat shapes. The sky is still um, very much a, a rectangular shape but the landscape is divided into these different areas now. So to kind of sum up and maybe to give a point that might you can maybe take away and use in your own paintings, try to think about the paper. Do you want the paper to be um, a vertical a sort of portrait format or a landscape format? And how are you going to divide the paper up into areas? Don't make it too complicated. Don't try and get 25 different little shapes and areas. Keep it simple. Um, three or four areas and then you can add in little things like vertical marks and different colors and things to add some interest. So that's how I sort of look at composition um, rather than lots of rules. It's just this simple idea of shapes and how they all fit together. Okay, I hope that was of use to somebody um, uh, and it made some sort of sense. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the big red subscribe button below and see you in the next video.